a loss, we might not see him again for the rest of the tournament. Exactly. It's, it's potentially now or never, although, again, very good pairing here for Joe. And though Jim Davis and Joe Lissette did become pretty good friends of the Players' Championship, as we saw, you have to imagine Jim Davis is going, come on, burn. Oh, for sure. Come on, baby, get me one here. As a Wooded Foothill is going to start things off here for round number seven. This is exciting for Joe. Maybe it's a Goblin Guide. Maybe it's a Wild Nakatl. But your opponent sacrificing Wooded Foothills on turn one is generally good news. Basic Mountain is what McNaughty's going to search up. We'll see what red spell it's going to be to start things off here. Could be a Goblin Guide, as you mentioned. Monastery Swiss Beer is an option. And there is the guide. Joe will take a long look at his hand force will among the options there into the red zone. We're going to go take a look at the top card. Misty Rainforest will be added to Lissette's hand from the Goblin Guide trigger. Lissette goes down to 18. I mean, Darren's got the draw. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, oh, come on. He's got the Iona in hand. I guess that could be good or bad. He gets to discard the hand size. Let's draw stuff was careful study, I think. Oh, come on, Joe. It's supposed to be unbiased when you're in the box. At least, you You're not know. supposed to root for someone. You're at, supposed to just call it evenly. At least let Darren get a third turn. Then he has a shot of winning the game. Well, he will get a third turn. Well, yes, with, with the ability to cast a spell in his deck. Sorry, oh, I should see, have clarified. Yeah, clarification is key in this business. So that's good. Here's a basic island. If you want to complain about something, how about the whiteboard land? We've been complaining Weird. about it for years, but I'm not going to stop until he changes. Here's careful study. Two cards coming here for Joe. Reanimate among them. Looks like Iona's heading to the graveyard. It's a pretty good place for that. Pretty good start here for Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so two cards discard, Iona among them. And Lissette's going to pass the turn back over to Magnati. It's going to have to be a pretty good turn for Darren. Mountain going to come into play. Fire Blast in hand. Here comes Goblin Guide. Reanimate the top card. Oh, we're going spiking, aren't we? Oh, yes. A little bit lower. Down to 12. Suspend a Rift Bolt. And pass the turn. Lissette's going to draw a copy of Reanimate. There's a Bloodstained Mire. Down to 11 he goes. Really good run here for Darren. <laughs> getting, getting Joe down to 11 here. That's pretty good for turn two. Pretty good. That's pretty good, right? Rip Bolt about to come up. Fire Blast in hand. I mean, this is potentially a turn three kill here that Darren had, but that's not going to matter. Exhume. Powerful. What do you think Joe's going to name? I like red here. You like red. Okay. We'll get confirmation. We're going to get confirmation if red was named. And Okay, we are being told now that red was the choice there from Lissette on Iona. So looks like a tough road ahead here for Magnati. Going to play it out, I guess. They might not, see something. Not something you would do. Nope. I am sure of that. I would have just, I would have conceded to the careful study. Oh, that's where you, I would, that's where you leave. <laughs> okay. And the reveal of reanimate. Sure. I would not have survived through my goblin guide trigger. I like where you, how you pick your spots. Right. Very methodical. Player's going to take a look at Iona here very quickly. Yeah, it's a spell that can't be cast. So what happens there with the suspended Rift Bowls, it just stays in suspend forever. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Here's a brainstorm. So the set will take a look at three cards. Two cards will go back here momentarily. And an attack for seven. Magnati's going to move down to 12. Bloodstained Mire and a passing of the turn. To Darren's credit, he is still in the lead. Yep. Guess to get Joe down to single digits here, which I like. Yes. Trigger. Joe's going to sacrifice his Bloodstained Mire. Go down to 10. And get a land out. We'll see what the top card of his deck is here momentarily. It's a reanimate. Now down to be dealt, and Joe will go down to eight. There's an attack from Iona. Magnati down to five. 
The set with two force wolves and two blue cards in hand. Big top deck here for Darren. Yeah. <laughs> There's an attack. Exhum is the card revealed. Down to six goes the set. A draw, an attack. Let's turn to game number two, shall we? Joe the second to win game number one here over Darren McNaughty. Reanimator up a game here over Burn as we're going to go over to Darren's sideboard. Tell me he's got some help in there. Got a little bit of help. Two copies of Smash the Smithereens, a Smelt, three Red Elemental Blast, three Relic of Progenitus, three Insaring Bridge, a Sulfuric Vortex, two copies of Searing Blood. So I like the Relic of Progenitus in this matchup, obviously, some, some anti graveyard action, the three copies of Insnaring Bridge. Sometimes Joe will not have the luxury of reanimating Iona. He'll have to go find, you know, whatever he happens to careful study. And in that scenario, Insnaring Bridge can be good. Uh, he may want the extra Vortex here, depending on how much dead weight he has in the deck. Only two copies of Searing Blaze, so I think those cards will probably not make the cut. Take a look at the other side of things here for the set. Four copies of Rep Decay, four Thought Seas. A Pimpy Needle, a Massacre, a Coffin Purge, a Sphinx of the Steel Wind, Tropical Island, two copies of Bayou. So, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, your thoughts? A fine, that's a fine reanimation target. Still not as good as Iona, but uh, you know, you have some mediocre stuff in here. The Tides about Tyrant, the Elastorn's not very good, so it's an upgrade over some of the other bullets. Do we like Thossies in this matchup? Uh, I don't mind it on the play, as, you know, Darren may have some anti-graveyard card that you really want to take, and, uh, you know, on the balance, even if he, if he doesn't have that sort of thing going on, if he's on a one Goblin Guide burn spell hand, Thossies can be worth quite a bit. It's also another way to get something into the graveyard, and Joe is really... Uh, you know, his priority is speed and consistency as much as possible uh, because his game plan is so much more powerful than Darren's. So I think on the balance, I would keep the thought seasons in. All right, well, we'll see how Joe opts to play it here. As both players will sideboard. We'll get you for game number two here in just a moment. But briefly, we will talk about the winter collection. Brand new sleeves, play mats, and dice bags available at Star City Games. Yeah, the Wolf, the Rodin, and the Mammoth and the Eternal Witness, all available on card sleeves, play mats, and dice bag. This is the 2015 Winter Collection, and you can order your stuff today at starcitygamescom slash creature collection, or head over to our booth at any open or Grand Prix we happen to be working. Eternal Witness is really picking up in popularity yep. now. Seen uh, quite a few Eternal Witness sleeves. Yeah. People like our little play on words, our puns on our creature collection. They're available, as Patrick did mention, starcitygamescom slash creature collection for more information about that as game number two here for Joe Lissette. It's a pretty important one. I do think he's in a great matchup here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win this game or game number three. I think Burns a really good matchup for Animator, push him on to five and two. But for Joe, it's pretty important that he gets out of the day with you know, three wins in a row, get himself into day number two. If Darren's on the play with a relic, he's, you know, he may be north of 50% in the matchup. But uh, the problem is that he's got to win game three on the draw. Yeah. And that's really hard, even if Darren has a relic. I rarely advocate aggressive mulligans in burn, but this is the kind of matchup where, uh, one, you really need Relic to have any sort of game plan. And two, because Joe doesn't have removal in his deck, if you draw any of your creatures, it's worth numerous cards. He's not going to just untap and kill your guy. Your Goblin Guide, your Eidolon, your Monastery, Swiss Spear, whatever. They're worth multiple burn spells in this matchup. So I think Darren should be throwing away seemingly good hands if they don't contain Relic of Genesis. I think that's probably a good idea. I mean, it gives him the best chance to win, I think. He's got a relic. His hand has to either kill on turn three or have relic. Yeah. And I don't think anything else is keepable. And his last hand potentially could kill on turn three. I think he, he did. I mean, he had fire blast, another attack from his guide coming. Some of that was facilitated by Joe's fetch lands and such, but that looked like a hand that could potentially be turn three. I mean, not we, an easy we thing. We don't see that a lot, yeah. Not an easy thing for Burn to do. I've done it very few times in my life. It's got to feel good every time you do, though. Yeah, it does. Let him know who the boss is. But less than once per tournament, I would say. That's too bad. That I, that I played the deck. Sure. That makes you really savor the ones where you get it. Both players are going to take a look at their opening. Magnati's going to mulligan pretty quickly here, so he didn't like what he saw. So the careful study, among other options here. Reanimate 2. Looks like he may have a copy of Abrupt Decay that he boarded in. And he looks content with what he has, so... Magnati going to take a look at his six cards. You have to imagine he's not too thrilled with the matchup. No. I don't know if this is the worst matchup for Burn, but it's pretty close. The Ley Lines matchup is really rough. <laughs> it's always nice that Legacy just has matchups that are, like, you know, 
95.5. Yep, whatever. <laughs> oh, Joe with the gemstone caverns. A it's luck a, counter. A luck counter. Yes. There's a bloodstained mire. This was the big innovation, innovation, excuse me, for Lissette to this deck, is able to play four copies of Genstone Cavern and steal the initiative back. You got a lot of play on turn one on the draw. Brainstorm and Tomb. And this is the kind of card that makes the, the start with Relic not even matter. And also, you can just do something like Careful Study plus Reanimate in the same turn. We might see that here in a second. As Magnani just simply suspends a Rift Bolt and passes the turn back. Joe going to start with a careful study. He can spike a turn one here if things break his way. I think somebody found a crystal brand. Oh, yep. he did. And a force of will in case that Darren's got something like surgical extraction. That doesn't even matter. That's pretty neat. Gemstone Cavern on full display here. Yep. These kind of hands is just another Lotus Petal. I guess Crowbox is a closer analog, but it does let you play something on the end of your opponent's first turn, and with Entomb in your deck, that's very powerful. Yeah. It allows for an Entomb into Exhum opening, which not even Lotus Petal permits. Joe going to hunt for his swamp. There it is. And with the reanimate, he can bring Gristlebrand Gristle back. That's a mouthful right away. You can see Darren with Relic in hand, and it's not even going to matter. Mm -mm. I know many, when they took a look at Joe's deck list at the Players' Championship and wondering why he's playing Gemstone Cavern, well, now you see. It's yep. very clear what this card's doing in his deck. Rift Bolt's going to come off Suspend, unless that's going to go down to 8. He's got a 7-7 seven, seven lifelinker in play. And against Burn, that's pretty much all you need. I mean, look at Darren's hand. He's got a second land and a Relic. If Joe does not have that kind of jump in mana, the Relic is now something he has to worry about. Yep. Instead, he can just win with beatdowns. Here's a Lava Spike going upstairs. The set's down to five. The follow-up is a Relic. It's a little late to the party, however. You see Lissette's hand of Abrupt Decay Force Will and a blue card. He'll take a draw step. But for Joe, that's all he needs to do is attack. Don't activate. Nope. Just 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink. Good enough to be burned. And pass that turn back over to Magnati. Magnati will activate his relic. Joe will have to remove a card. So he'll send the polluted delta packing. What if Foothills will be sacrificed here by Darren. He'll search up a mountain. We'll see what his play is going to be here in just a moment. Another nice thing here is the mana fixing that the Gemstone Cavern provides as well. He's able to search for a basic here and still be able to cast the Abrupt Decay in his hand. Oh, for sure. After casting a blue spell, you yeah. know? Soon a lot of work. You pay cost in a lot of different ways with that card. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some positives and some negatives to it, and this is one of the games where it's basically all positive. Relic going to be sacrificed, so McKnight is going to get the opportunity to draw a card from Bloodstained Mire. This is a goblin guide. That's an attack. Take a look at the top card. Abrupt Decay. Turn that down. We'll settle take two. No interest in casting a spell. I really like not doing anything about that goblin guide there. Joe wants to make sure he can answer just a bunch of ensnaring bridges. Yep. And the goblin guide damage doesn't matter at this point. He's gaining so much life. He doesn't lose any nonsense. Goblin guide does not fall under the category of nonsense. Yeah. Magnati will draw. Rift Bolt going upstairs. Let's head down to 14. There is a mountain. Here is the attack. Take a look. It's a brainstorm. If Nadi will pass, Joe will quickly untap, draw that brainstorm, get into the red zone, and that is going to do it. Joe Lissette's going to win this match here over Darren McNaughty. Two games to zero. Reanimator dispatches Burn as Joe flashes a smile to the camera. He's still in this thing at 5-2. and two. Probably his easiest match of the day. I, I would, would imagine. It's a matchup that's really, really bad for Burn. Uh, and if the Reanimator deck stumbles,